Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another YouTube video. And today I am going to do a recap of my game. Now, what is interesting is the place where we're recording this. And you saw it. That's correct. After that fight, I was fearless and I hacked my opponent's studio. Or in other words, my opponent was kind enough to invite me over and to celebrate the fight. Honestly, I prepared for many lines, actually for everything which was um, adequate to be played. I prepared for E4, I prepared for D4, I prepared for Knight F3, I prepared for English. And of course, I was waiting for London. If Andrea goes for full content, of course she will play London. Because London and Andrea, these are two things which are never split apart. They just go naturally together. But if Andrea really wanted to challenge me on the chessboard, and of course she knew that she would dominate on the boxing, she should have changed the line. First of all, London is too easy to guess and too easy to prepare for me, which I was doing, obviously. Those who prepare against me, they open the chess base, they see that it's so easy. Wait, why? Because on e4, I play only Karakan. It will not be easy and fast to attack by your opponent. It will be a long outplayed game. And in Karakan, there are a bunch of lines for that. So I would spend hours and hours. Actually, I would spend way more hours to prepare against e4. And I was going for some surprise line that I never tried before. Some really dubious gambit that would take Andrea completely out of the prep. For London, my preparation was simple. My coach told me four moves. d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d6, e3, h6. That's it. That was my prep. With the idea of playing g5. That's the plan. That's the aggressive approach. h6 is a novelty. It's a new move in London. The reason why my coach told me to, to, to play that, also because he already tried that in his own games, but only in Blitz. Therefore, those games are not in the chess base. And he did crush some 26 and 2500 Grandmasters with this line. It's a really nice weapon. Now, what's surprising is that when I downloaded Andrea's games and I made a filter of something like, okay, last two years, 2020, 2022, and I saw that it was about something like, actually crazy number, like 4,400 plus games of Andrea in this line and I saw that there were nine games with this h6 move and guess who played that to Andrea it was the one and only Daniel Nordisky so g5 was my prep here was a challenge because the white the choice is so white for black I couldn't decide should I go knight h5 should I go bishop g7 that was tough so in the game I was hesitating a lot and what you can see here on the clock I spent half of my time in the first eight moves of the game in the opening that I already prepared that I spent later in the game. This shows you how great the opening choice was because I actually went to the position that I really, really had an easy play and I knew what to do and I understood the plans and that was really impressive. E4. E4 is the first dubious move. Even though it looks really nice, uh, it attacks the center. It, it's a great move aesthetically, but it gives me a practical chance of creating pressure on the board by putting my knight on F4. After knight F4, white is facing their first practical challenge what to do the bishop on d3 is attacked the pawn on g2 is attacked should white retreat the bishop on f1 should white take the knight on f4 that's the question my russian coach back in times when i only started playing chess would always tell me a very particular feature of weak chess players is that when they don't know what to do they trade pieces do not get me out of context. I do not say, I do not call my Andrea a weak player. The moral of this example is when you play against someone who is weaker than you, you mean that he's weaker than you, not just like weak. By playing knight f4, I was like, for sure Andrea will take. Just because she won't know what to do and she will take. But for me, it's actually really great because by this, I opened the file for the attack, the G file. And besides, my G pawn goes to the center, even though now... It's double pawns, but the pawn is closer to the center, so it's it's stronger, and it's actually in the opponent's in the opponent's territory. And you know, it's like a stranger in your house. When he comes in, you really need to kick him out, otherwise you'll be in big trouble. Queen e2. Now here, my move was easy. Bishop d7 to finish the development. That was, by the way, the funny. That was the move of the computer when I tried to several times the engine, the stockfish. When I tried several times to, to analyze the position with stockfish, you would always suggest this bishop d7. And at first I was like, wait, what does this move do? And then I said, myself, okay, it's just a development. And that's why I played it. Okay, computer plays it, I played it. And I really liked e6 idea because it gives the square e7 for the queen. And then the king could castle or not. We'll see. Here, Andrea plays a4. Now, practically speaking, that would perhaps been way more smarter for Andrea to castle long side because on the long side on the queen side Andrea's king would be safer but after playing a5 it actually weakens the, the queen side it weakens the potential place of the king 
on, on A4, I immediately answer with A5. Why did I do that? Simply because it's, it's basic rules of strategy. Whatever your opponent tries to gain space with A pawn on the queen side or the king side with H pawn, you need to answer A5 or H5. That's how you do it. Knight C4, queen E7. Right here, the clock was paused and we were to go for the first ever boxing round. Gosh, I cannot explain to you how desperate I was in that moment. They stopped me from my chess game and I had to fight on the ring. But I didn't have any choice and I was prepared for that. And here goes the second blow. D5. Queen D2 attacks the F4 pawn. So I should probably defend it. But I didn't see how to defend it. I mean, Queen F6 seemed weird and there's no other option. E5 didn't seem correct at all because of D5. It would completely block everything. It would have been a disaster. But D5. D5 looked like, oh wow, yes. If White cannot take the F pawn because of the... Knight is attacked and if... E takes d5, then e takes d5, and the white king is under check, and the knight is attacked. It's probably even after knight e5. I mean, if we sue, the, if we say this, if we if we look at this, yeah, white white should be after f6. White should be losing a piece here. So I was really happy with this d5 because I continued my strategy. My strategy was to open files with the direction of the king, create potential attack. Knight a3. D takes e4. Bishop takes e4. Here was another challenge for me. Should I go f5 or not? At first, I really did not want to play this move because I was afraid to create a backward pawn. But then I saw, okay, what would white do? If white takes bishop takes c6, then bishop takes c6. And I've got a monstrous bishop here, light squared bishop. If white doesn't take on c6 and simply goes back to d3 or to c2 as it happened in the game then i have another blow e5 and i don't have any backward pawn anymore because simply after all the takes i am in time to to be secure on the on this e file yeah that seems really nice although like objectively if we look at this like it doesn't seem like anything dangerous after queen e2 it doesn't seem like like i mean once again, I'm not analyzing this with an engine at all. I'm analyzing this game with the uh, practical aspect. And not just chess practical aspect, but like chess boxing practical aspect. And I just like, with the idea that I had to go to yet another boxing round with Andrea where I could ha have potentially be. That's why, uh, yeah, I assume that this line with Queen E2 and taking on E5 and Queen E2 would have been the best choice for Andrea because it would simplify. But look scary andrea didn't do that she pushed d5 and there we go d5 what should i do i mean my knight is attacked i mean if i go back no i don't have this option because my plan was to go straight solid aggressive straight solid aggressive so another beautiful move with a pawn e4 contra attack on the knight on f3 if white takes on c6 black takes on f3 another check on the king king goes away and position is completely open that's exactly what i wanted in this fight so d5 e4 short castle now many have criticized and rare for playing short castle and i understand them on practical level and we saw that in the game indeed that was a way too dangerous it should have been easier to castle long and then like i can't I still can't take the knight even if i do the same thing that i did in the game knight e5 yeah i wouldn't have that much of attack now looking at this position yeah it's 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 actually pretty evident. So I guess this might have been the biggest mistake or blunder of the match. It was the, the I think it was the worst practical decision for White here to castle short. But I can understand where it's coming from because under the pressure, you do just first thing that you are like the most used to. And like for chess players, it's it's just so much more natural to castle short than to castle long. Castle long needs a, like an extra two seconds of thinking. But when you are in a chess boxing match, you don't have those extra two seconds of thinking. You see, okay, I need to castle short. And then, okay, I need to castle. But castle where? Long or short? Okay, long. See? It would take, actually, like, extra three, four seconds. And, obviously, with the pressure, Andrea didn't have that time. Uh, but short castle happened. Knight e5. I mean, this is a beautiful choice. Yeah, and I saw that commentators were impressed on how fast I played it. And I was impressed by myself as well. So, what, what was in my mind? Levy's first thought was that, okay, maybe taking the knight would have been better. Because Levy is like, Levy is a calculator. He prepares like with the engine, so he goes for, for direct move sequence. Whereas my mindset, I mean, my like the way how I play chess, it always, it's more of like uh, positional slash dynamic style. And that's what I did. So, like, I didn't even, like, I didn't have time to calculate. Therefore, I said I won't calculate it. I just saw if I take she takes, and then I don't know what will do, what will be here. Wow, it's actually white winning. Okay, Levy, you were wrong. I didn't have time to calculate that. So I saw, okay, either I do, 
I go for the mass or I continue solid aggressive. And 95 was just that solid aggressive. And I really love that. 94, a logical response. Now, what should I do? Go for the king. Here, on the second, I had a disconnect. You know, like the disconnect when you like your brain disconnects when you get a punch and then you cut it back. I told myself, mm, what would be the strongest? The strongest would be like to push, to improve, to how. But wait, wait, wait. I'm playing chess boxing. I don't have time to improve the position. I need to go for the attack. So it shall be F3. See? So I had that moment of me as a chess player where I wouldn't necessarily play F3. And then I just remembered, no, you're in a chess boxing match. In several seconds, you will be punched again in the face. You have to go for, for the straight fight. And that was the F3 move. G3 is a very is a very logical response, even though it's a mistake. How do I continue? F4 doesn't work because of Bishop H. For rook g8 is too slow. Okay, I need to bring the queen. I cannot do queen g5. How can I prepare queen g5? Yeah, there we go. h5, bishop h6, prepare queen g5. h5, knight a b5, bishop h6. Immediately attacking the queen. And here the clock was paused for the second time. And we were to go for yet another boxing round. But guess what? I had more courage to go into the second boxing round because I knew I didn't die in the first boxing round. And there we go. Dina survived yet another boxing round and she was to face Andrea on the chessboard right again after that bishop h6. White answer with queen d1, queen g5. Finally, my dream was accomplished. I really wanted to bring this queen here and I did it and I was happy. And right from now on, I saw how how to mate. But the problem is that I also saw how to protect the mate for white, which is queen g5, knight x f7, queen f7. Of course, I didn't care about the rook. I mean, knight f7, who would care about the rook when your only goal in this in this fight is to go for the checkmate into attack? And you don't have time. You do not have time to protect rooks when you're getting punched in the face by Andrea Botas. That's why king f7, king h1, queen g4. And here I was really surprised, but I honestly didn't know what to do. Had white played rook g1, queen h3, queen f1 to protect the mates coming on h2 which was my plan and this is what i did in the game but the problem is what i did not see and i'm not sure that i would have seen it had andrea played this i didn't see it back then is that here i have a very beautiful win in two which is knight g4 threatening the mate on h2 and if white tries to capture the queen there we go the one and only smooth mate knight f2 the one that you saw in the in the match that i missed here, Andrea does not capture the rook, and that shows everything. That shows that Andrea understood that the mate was coming and the rook didn't matter. And she needed to try to stall. And to stall, you need to create checks. So here, white tries to create some counterplay, but unfortunately, they are out of resources. Queen h3, bishop b3 check, king g6. When, I d when the check was delivered, I was like, I just need to put the king on the place where there's going to be no check after. Rook g1. And knight g4. So now knight g4 is coming. Mate on h2 is coming. What did I think about in this position? Okay, I'm winning. I'm winning the chess game. Calm down, Dina. You don't know what's the count about. You're winning on the chess board, but you don't know if it will be enough before the round three. And my plan, my actual plan for this fight was to checkmate Andrea in the third round of chess to avoid the third round of boxing. Another interesting detail is that starting from knight g4, it was evident for both players that there was a mate and there was absolutely no single way to stop this mate. The count at this time was at 47 seconds and Andrea's clock was at one minute. So Andrea had more time than the count for the third boxing round. It means that her strategy was the strategy of chess boxing to stop and stall. But to stall wisely, not just stop and start thinking, but try to make some moves and try to, you know, like act, act like you are thinking like you are serious in the chess game. And that's what she did. And that's a very accurate strategy at the chess boxing game. The only difference is that in this event, there were a lot of subjective decisions by arbiters. You all have seen many matches were stopped too early. Many matches were stopped too late. But one thing that was different from a classical chess boxing match is that the chess arbiter was instructed not to stop chess players when they were stalling. And for any average chess player, it is evident here that the strategy is to stall. Knight f3. Once again, my fault, I didn't find knight f2. Because when you're a chess player and you're competing and you know like you have time on your clock and you see the mate that it's not possible to be stopped, you do not want to see anything else. Your brain doesn't want to look for anything else. What is your mindset where you're trying to find the candidate move in a normal game? You see first checks, then captures, then direct attacks. Okay, what are my checks? 
queen h2. I mean, let's let's put it on to after knight f3. What are my checks? Queen h2, queen g queen g2, and knight f2. Oh my gosh, knight f2 is not just a check. It's a mate. It's a mate in one. Wow, there we go. So this is the process of finding the right move the candidate when you're just playing the game. But when you see the mate, the mate that it's not being stopped by any way, and you know that, your brain doesn't want to overthink. Your brain doesn't want to look for anything else. So it was a mixture of blunder, but also of like me just being practical. I see the way, that's it. I don't think about anything else. I just stop thinking. That's what happened to me. So knight f3, and I answered right away. E takes a three, and here I could hear the commentators and the crowd. And I was like, ooh! And I could feel that something was happening. I didn't know. Was it because the me was coming or was it because I missed something? And I asked myself, I had time to ask myself, wait, did I miss something? What did I miss? I don't see that I missed something. Okay, so they must have been cheering for the maiden coming. E takes F3. But that's crazy how much time you see was spent on just trying to wait and go for the next one, for the next round of boxing. Now, once again, I do want to point out that that's a very correct strategy. And I would do absolutely the same thing. You knew you had the checkmate coming. I, I tried to stall, but unfortunately, I thought this was a chess boxing match. It felt more like hide and seek. Do you know the better chess player won? Congratulations. The rules are the rules. Stalin was allowed and there was no takeo. Is it my excuse? Is it uh, me trying to, to justify um, the question of a TKO? As a chess player, I do find it unfair that the arbiters do not count TKOs in Stalin in a chessboard. What else do you want from me? So here we resumed another boxing round. That was very tough boxing round. You know all the plots. I will let you discuss that in the comments down below of this video. Here we came back to the chessboard for the fourth time, and that was the last time, and it didn't last long. That was a funny comment from commentators. Lavik was saying, okay, Dina has been punched, Dina is suffering, Dina is almost out of breath. Maybe, maybe she will lose, we saw it already, maybe she will lose. And Lev is like, no, it's over. Bishop f7, king h7, bishop g6, the last attempt to check, king takes g6, and here... Andrea makes a very beautiful reaction. She just gives the handshake and then she puts her king down. For me, this was the biggest challenge of my life. That was a very unique opportunity to put myself in a, perhaps the best physical shape that I was ever. Unfortunately, it has been only three weeks, barely three weeks of training. I did what I could. I did not show the boxing that I studied. I struggled with uh, controlling my breath. I was... Uh, fatigued, my stamina was not on the top, but I handled it. I handled it and I survived. And for me, being in that ring was already the victory. One more thing that is very important, and this is in the chess part, is that I was surprised and impressed by my own chess. This game might have been one of the best blitz games I've ever played in my life. I fully managed to control my brain and I was fully disciplined. I knew what I needed to do, I knew my plan to play solid, to play aggressive, to play fast moves, and that's what I did. I didn't overthink any single time. Besides, I was super calm and super confident. And I think, I think Matt was right. When you do chess boxing, you have adrenaline, you have physical exercise, and it actually helps your brain. It actually helps your brain. It helps your chest until you get punched really hard. And I wanted to thank Ludwig for the invitation, but also my opponent, Andrea Botis, who is just a freaking beast, a killer, and I survived. Would I repeat it once again? That question remains unknown. But I will say one thing. On my territory, why not? There has been so much controversy. Many people thought Andrea was robbed. Finally, Ludwig and Mogul Moves decided that Andrea Botas should have won by TKO after a fourth standing count, so they will be giving her a belt as well. Two winners? Two belts? What do I think about two co-winners? Well, I think it's ridiculous. We're not two girls in kindergarten both getting belts to make us stop crying. So, why stop the controversy now? In 90 seconds for Andrea to prove what she can do in the ring if she does it. All signs point to a loss in chess. Ref starts around 90 seconds of the clock. Oh Five seconds. God. And in the same way that Andrea waited out time. Oh, there's the bell. Dina waited out time. Wow. Survived the round. And we're going back in. Oh, my God.